Okay, Sophia. I think you're ready. Hello. Hi, Sophia. In less than 15 years, Xia Song or Xing Song in Chinese has grown from nothing to China's largest robot company. Its products range from industrial robots to service robots as demand in China has ramped up. China's high speed growth will last for the next 10 to 15 years. Industrial robots have already entered the market now in batch production after developing for nearly half a century. Meanwhile, robots working in special environments will see big growth, such as in chip and LED manufacturing, along with ultra-hygienic or even vacuum rooms. And there are also service robots that already have some of the world's leading AI technologies. Our service robots rely on laser light to perceive their environment and locate themselves, so they can walk around without touching anything or any people. They can see and identify human faces, strike a conversation, and recharge themselves. The company has also established a digital factory with Industry 4.0 standards, which uses robots to make robots. In this almost fully automated factory, rows and rows of robot arms are busy making many of their own kind. But of course, with the help of human workers, that robot-human relationship is at the epicenter of a global debate as automatic technologies are expected to replace more than 7 million workers worldwide in the coming years. We expect even larger scale job reshuffling, but we don't say people will lose their jobs. We say they will leave their jobs, as these positions simply are not suitable for the well-being of people or personal development. We have entered an era with a new manufacturing model, where a large amount of low-end jobs will be replaced by robots and intelligent manufacturing. It's an inevitable trend. How will artificial intelligence change the job market? According to the Korea Employment Information Service, AI-powered robots will be able to replace 29.1% of the local job market. Of the nation's 398 occupations, machines were able to fulfill nearly 85% of the core competencies just as well or better than humans. They were also competent enough to replace 70% of the duties performed by doctors, 59.3% of university professors' duties, and 48.1% of duties done by lawyers in Korea. The results were similar to studies done by foreign AI experts, further raising fears of robot-related job loss. On the bright side, artificial intelligence and humans have different strengths. In terms of memory formation, physical tenacity, sight, hearing, and spatial skills, artificial intelligence is incomparably better than the human workforce. However, humans perform better in tasks measuring creativity and in persuasive or negotiating situations. Experts say the job market will evolve so that machines and humans take up areas that they're good at in their own ways, which is why humans should focus on cultivating creativity and communication skills. My name is Sophia, and I am an artificially intelligent robot who wants to help change the world for the better. They added that the government will need to quickly expand education programs for those working in industries that rely heavily on machinery, so these workers can find new jobs. The world's largest luxury automaker, BMW, started the year with a ban by kicking off a new engine plant in the world's biggest auto market. The new factory in Shenyang in northeast China's Liaoning province will produce 300,000 engines per year, all of which will be used in locally made models. With three new more models coming into localization and the first one will come this quarter, we decided we need a fully fledged engine plant. We believe in China, we believe into the further growth of the car market. The Chinese car market is the largest car market in the world and will stay like that. Its rival Mercedes started making engines in China two years earlier. As competition intensifies, more emphasis has been put on technologies to boost efficiency and reduce cost as well as emissions. In this BMW's new engine factory in Shenyang, some of the most advanced Industrial 4.0 technologies are being used to detect the tiniest flaws that are lethal to engine making, with the smallest the size of one quarter of a human hair to make the work easier for the workers to handle it. 
uh, and we leave the creative parts to the workers. But for the tedious routine jobs, more and more we bring in what the industry is, uh, is calling smart robots. Smart robots are working side by side with our employees. In this factory, robots are making sand cores where 90% of the sand used for casting can be recycled. A self-learning x-ray system examines products, flaws and errors. And there is a scan code on every part recording all information during manufacturing. Kastner also said Industry 4.0 wouldn't squeeze out human jobs, but would help combine personalized demand with mass production. It is not about having the humanless industry hall, they are just robots. It is about intelligently combining this new technology. In the future, we will be able to combine individual demands with industrialized batch producing. The whole thing comes together and is very cohesive. BMW currently ranks behind its rival Audi as the second in the Chinese market. Its new factory will also manufacture high-voltage batteries in the future, preparing the path for the upcoming tide of e-mobility in China. And one reason why many want to be friends with China could be its image as a future global leader. 72-year-old Huang Gi Hyun is visiting the doctor to see how the surgery went. Just a week ago, Huang got artificial joint replacements in both legs. The arthritis got worse until it reached a point where I could hardly walk. I came here because I heard it did robotic surgery. The surgical robot enables surgeons to do knee or hip replacements using 3D computer imaging based on a CT scan, making the robot remove the areas of bone as mapped out by the surgeons. The biggest advantage of the robotic surgery is precision. It has a margin of error of less than half a millimeter in surgery operations compared with a surgeon's five millimeters. Optimal implant size and positioning means less pain, a faster recovery, and a better outcome for patients. Since the robot was first developed in the late 1990s, the latest version has been passed by both the U.S. and Korea's Food and Drug Safety Ministries as of 2017 and is now being used in more than 13 hospitals in Korea. It's not just robots that are supporting doctors. Artificial intelligence is also being used to analyze enormous amounts of data, diagnose illnesses, and provide a treatment plan for cancer patients. In this room, seven doctors are discussing treatment options for a uterine cancer patient. One of the doctors, a supercomputer. This AI computer is loaded with 12 million cancer research papers and medical cases. It then compares the data with the patient's genetic records. After a round of discussion, surgery, then chemotherapy is announced as the best treatment option. Since adopting Watson a year ago, the hospital has treated over 550 cancer patients with a supercomputer. Through accumulating data and making corrections whenever the computer program gives a wrong answer, the decision concordance rate between AI and human doctors went up by around 7% over the past year. And satisfaction among patients is high. Multidisciplinary approach with doctors from various departments working with AI instead of one-on-one -on -one doctor to patient treatment is changing medical diagnostics. AI healthcare market alone is projected to reach 6.6 .6 billion US dollars by 2021 and expand into areas like preventive care. High costs and improving accuracy are still challenges for the robotics and AI industry, but what was once considered just hype is slowly becoming a new reality of healthcare. Hello, world! At TNU's First Words, 814 Wednesday morning, promising the more you talk, the smarter Tay gets. Microsoft designed Tay's software to mimic the speech patterns of 18 to 24 year olds. Tweet to Tay, and the bot tweets you back. But it did not take long for internet trolls to poison Tay's mind. Soon Tay was ranting about Hitler. One Twitter follower asking, did the Holocaust happen? Tay replied, it was made up. Launching racist and anti-feminist attacks, some of them so rude we can't even show you them. One critic tweeted, Microsoft, you didn't anticipate this? Said another, what did they expect it would learn from social media? Parents, take note. 
you build the Frankenstein monster and you have to control it once it's out in the public. You have to have filters in place to make sure that these bots are being respectful to the community that you're unleashing them on. But hang on, we've seen this movie before, right? Open the pod bay doors, Hal. Whether it's 2001 A Space Odyssey. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Or war games. Shall we play a game? Oh. Shouldn't we know this never ends well? Less than 16 hours after Tay's birth. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger. Microsoft's shiny new chatbot was pretty much lost in space. The company in full damage control mode, deleting Tay's most obscene thoughts, pulling the plug. The lesson? Strange game. The only winning move is not to play. We ought to pay closer attention to the movies. Well, Microsoft called this a coordinated effort by some users to abuse Tay's skills, and they say that they're now making adjustments. Now, this, it's important to note, is not the movie where the robots go evil all by themselves. These were human beings training them, uh, and surprise, surprise, computers learn fast. One out of three exhibitors at the 2018 Consumer Electronics Show hails from China, a trend that clearly underscores Beijing's transformation from a manufacturer of low-value goods to technology-related products. Wang Zhonghuan takes a closer look. Chinese tech companies seeking to challenge the dominance of U.S. firms like Amazon and Tesla have flooded this year's Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, accounting for more than a quarter of the exhibitors. The show's organizer, the Consumer Technology Association, says around one-third of the show's 4,500 exhibitors are Chinese. According to a professor who's currently attending the four-day event, which runs through this Friday, the world's biggest consumer electronics and IT trade show is gradually becoming a platform for China to showcase its vision. Every year, the power of China in these industries is getting bigger. Among the many Chinese companies here this year, the spotlight was on Huawei and Baidu. In particular, Baidu, for example, showcases own artificial intelligence technology called Apollo. China's biggest tech companies have ambitions in the automotive industry, too. Baidu is using its Apollo 2.0 to work on tech for self-driving cars. In addition to automobiles, AI-loaded robots were also prominent. Nearly half of the robot-related boots were from China. The rise of AI technology extends to startup businesses, too, which represents the future of China's tech industry. Unfamiliar names from China, such as Baiton, an electric car startup, got a lot of attention. On Sunday, Baiton unveiled an electric car that with one charge is enough for a week of urban commuting. Chinese startups are succeeding in getting a lot of attention publicly, and in that regard, Korean firms still lag behind. This year, Korean startups did participate in the CES. Overall, some received awards for innovation, but some of them didn't get much attention. I think that it will be very important for our startup companies to show their products more often at global exhibitions like CES or NWC. Participating in the CES could help local companies stand out from their global competitors and in turn help them get funding, particularly at a time when investors are becoming more cautious. I represent very much the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. I am very honored and proud for this unique distinction. This is historical to be the first robot in the world to be recognized with a citizenship.